All right, so in this video, what I'm going to do is quickly explain through this Hello World um, Pro C++ program example that we just compiled. So the first part right here is this include IO stream part. And this include is a preprocessor statement. And what that means is um, it will be done to uh, before the code is compiled. So it's just, it's just a code processing thing. And what it basically does is it imports this file called IO stream. And you might be wondering where the IO stream file is. And the location for that is actually if you go to your main folder and then main and then library and then um, developer and the command line tools. Remember that in user bin we had the G++ compiler that we're using. If you go back a bit and then go into include and C++ v1, uh, we should find that the IO stream file is right here. So what this means is that um, I'm going to open this with code just so we can have a look at it. What this means is that G++, when it reads the code, the first thing it does is it literally copies and pastes and this code on top of this. So we have access to all the code in here as well before it gets compiled. And the reason for that is we need the C out part from here, but we'll look at that in a bit. Then we have this right here, and this is a function. So we have the return type of the function, which is an integer. Then we have the name of the function, which is main. And with C++, unlike JavaScript, you can't just write code anywhere you want and expect it to run. Um, you have to actually put it inside this main function. So basically, the start of the program is the start of the main function right here, and the end of the program is at the end, generally at the end of the main function right here. So the main function is pretty much the whole life cycle of the program. And he, in here, you can give um, arguments, but there aren't any arguments or parameters here. Then we have the function body here. So this std c out, this std part right here is a namespace, and the namespace is basically a collection of variable names. So for ex we can use the same variable name multiple times in C++ as long as we associate them with a namespace. So for example, we could have a variable name called add, which is either the name of a function that adds um, an item to a list or a name of the function that adds an, uh, two numbers together. So if we had um, for the, the add to the list, what we could have is we could have a namespace called the list and then have the add function in there. Then we could have a namespace called number and have the add function in there as well. And this namespace part basically says what it belongs to. So we'll have either list add or um, number add like that and we know which add function we're talking about and um, what this std right here is basically a namespace that's been defined in this io stream file that we imported and you can actually find it here so it says namespace std and we can see that our c out is right there and you can see that the c out is actually um, an o stream object so this is just an object of the class o stream and again o stream is missing from this but once again we can see that it's included here so again when this include happens this it will include this file and then that this file when that gets pre-processed it will also include the o stream file right here which is um, this one right here. So again what this does is everything in here gets included into this and then everything from here gets included into that. So we'll always have all the code we need before compilation. And um, I won't go into detail about this OStream object but just think of it this way. It, whatever you give it, it will basically print it to the console. That's all it does. So what we're doing here is this is an insertion operator so this just means um, pass along the data in this direction. So we're just giving this string hello world to the C out, which is an object of the class OStream. And remember, OStream objects will just output whatever they receive to the terminal. So we're telling um, it to output hello world, the string right here, and then a new line to the terminal. And in C++, all um, lines need to end with a semicolon. So unlike JavaScript, it's not optional here. Um, if, if you take out the um, semicolon, as you saw, I think maybe in my first video, the compiler actually throws an error and says that you can't do that. So you must include the semicolon. Then finally, we have the return zero. And the reason we've returned zero is that the main method in C++ must always return an integer. And the integer that it should return should specify how the program went. And we're returning zero because an exit code of zero means that the program returned okay or everything went fine. Um, again, you can look up exit codes on Google and stuff.
So once again, what this program does is it actually I'll compile it and then I'll explain it. So I'm going to compile it again, and this time there should be no errors. So we should have the um, oops, we should have the hello world executable right here, and then we can run that. So I'll say dot slash hello world, and you just hide the name of the executable into the terminal to run it, and we can see hello world gets printed. So again, what happened here is when we ran this compiler, we told it to this dash o means output, so we told it to create a file or an executable file called hello world, and after that we gave it the name of the source file, which was hello world.cpp, which is this. Then what it does is it included this code right here, which also included this code right here. Then what we're doing is from the standard namespace, so it looks for a namespace called standard, which it finds here, because remember this file was copied and pasted on top of this. And it looks for the C out, which is an O stream object, and then it just gives it this hello world string, which is what this insertion operator does. So it gives the hello world, and this will receive that hello world and output it to the terminal, which is what's happened here. Then we've returned an exit code of zero, and that means everything went okay. And as you can see, it's ex exited correctly to the desktop right here. So that's exactly how the um, this basic hello world C++ um, program runs.